It's the presence of Dido Bell, a mixed-race girl in an 18th-century portrait of the aristocracy, which makes this painting so rare and important. I'm fascinated by her, and I'm not the only one. Director Amarasante made a feature film about her. I'm keen to find out about Bell's life here and why she's become such an important figure in black British history. So, Emma, what, what does this painting mean to you? Well, my original interest was to find out who we have been as people of colour going back in time and before the wind rush, before that, that ship arrived in 1947. And this is one example of that. There she is in all of her glory, not as a slave, not as we're used to seeing people of colour often in paintings, but as something else. So on the one hand, it's a symbol, and on the other hand, it's, it's a door, it's a question, it's a whole set of questions. And what have you discovered in the, in the process of making this film about Belle herself? I discovered the complexity of her predicament as a privileged woman of colour in the 18th century, growing up in Kenwood House, more wealthy than many white people, but not fully equal within her own family, and yet clearly very loved. While the girls were living here, the transatlantic slave trade was at its peak, so a friendship like theirs would have been highly unusual. The artist captures their close bond, but the props they hold reveal differences in their status within the family. Lady Elizabeth has a book, signalling she's educated, while Dido Bell has a bowl of fruit, firmly suggesting that she's seen as an exotic figure. She must have understood what her privilege was, and at the same time, she must have understood that there were many, many people who looked like her that were having extremely difficult lives at the time because of um, the, the slave trade and its ramifications. And while Dido Bell lived here, Lord Mansfield became an important figure in the legal debate about slavery. He was the country's top judge and in 1783 made a landmark decision against the slave trade. Mansfield ruled against the owners of a slave ship, the Zong, whose captain threw over a hundred slaves into the sea in an attempt to claim compensation. Perhaps it's not surprising then that he took special care of Dido Bell, but it would have been far from safe for her to leave Kenwood House on her own. The reality of her life was that she had to be protected by her family. If she stepped out of the, her house alone, she could have been captured by slave catchers who wouldn't have thought for a minute about questioning who she was, who she belonged to, but would have um, zapped her away in a heartbeat. It's very interesting to know that when Lord Mansfield died, he left her in his will, her freedom. Um, the interesting thing was that she, he hadn't left her that prior to his death, and I imagine that was probably because she was safer under his protection um, and belonging to his family than she was simply having free papers. But then once, once he passed away, all he could leave her with, really, um, what were those papers and hope, hope that she would be safe. After Lord Mansfield died in 1793, Dido Bell left Kenwood House, married a Mr. Davinia, and had three children. She died in London in 1804, aged 42. Were it not for this picture, she probably would have been forgotten, but it remains one of the earliest positive portrayals of a black person in British art. It's something very free, confident, um, soft and easy about the way she she presents herself and for me that you know sort of finger on her cheek to me says I am here I existed you know and I'm very moved by that after Dido Bell died the painting remained here until 1922 when the Mansfield family sold the house and moved all their possessions to Schoon Palace <laughs> 